A while back, I fermented a beer with a $25 Fur Monster plastic carboy and compared it to the exact same beer fermented in a fancy stainless conical. We thought the beers came out quite different. So the finish on this one, a lot longer than that. Although in the end, we couldn't distinguish between them. I'm going to call it as the cheaper one. The answer is... That's the expensive one. Oh, you're kidding! <laughs> Still, the stainless conical had a bunch of advantages. It was temperature controlled, it was cold crashed without exposure to oxygen, and it was pressure transferred to a keg. So, with a few hacks for a couple of bucks, can I modify the Fur Monster to have those same advantages? And what should I brew to test this out? Well, I'm brewing a beer that simply has no tolerance for poorly controlled fermentation. I'm brewing a New England IPA. Now, I've been speaking with the folks at the vintage shop who make the Fur Monster, and they've sent me this big old box full of accessories. There's things in here for handling hops, for tightening the lid. And I asked them about pressure. Now, the Fur Monster is not pressure rated, but they told me they've added up to 10 PSI of pressure into the Fur Monster without any issues. And a little bit of pressure would be quite handy because I would like to do pressurized transfers. So how could I get this fermenter to hold a little bit of pressure? By default, the lid has a bung and an airlock. That's going to hold no pressure at all. So my first thought was to replace the airlock with a carbonation cap. I added a bit of tubing to the carb cap and stuffed it into the bung. It's a pretty tight fit. I pushed this carb bung into the lid of the fermenter and wait, safety first. Okay, good. So then I added just a touch of pressure, two to three PSI. That seemed to work, kinda. The fermenter was holding pressure, but it felt like a house of cards. A gentle squeeze on the bung and yeah, back to the drawing board. Now I did have a second lid without the hole. How to more securely add that carb cap? Well, these things are designed to screw onto a plastic bottle. So how about a plastic bottle neck sized hole? Using a step drill bit, I drilled a hole just big enough to fit the bottle top through. With a bit of a twist, that fits. I cut the bottle so just the neck and lid part remained and added a rubber grommet. I pushed that through the lid and screwed on my carb cap to the other side. A nice snug fit. Okay, one more grommet on the lid, then I added that to the fermenter and tightened. Out with the gas tank again and with glasses back on, I gingerly applied pressure. Did that actually work? Let's see. Holy cow, I have a pressurized fermenter. Okay, so time to brew this beer, and I'm starting out crushing my already pre-crushed grains. And that crush is a good bit finer than what you'd get just at the homebrew store. So this should speed things along a bit. In my New England IPA, I'm using 49% two row into that. I have 18% carafoam, 15% each of flaked barley and white wheat malt, and 3% aromatic malt. Now, this gives me an OG of around 1069, and that means about a 7 cent beer. I'm boiling for 30 minutes, adding 17 IBU of a Zaka with 5 minutes to go. That late addition will mean I keep around aromas of juicy mango and tropical fruit. At Flame Out, I'm adding my Whirlpool Hop additions, the Zaka again, along with Citra and Amarillo. For yeast, I'm using Amiga OYL052. That's D-I-P-A ale. During the boil, I added Firm Cap S. This is used to prevent boilovers, but there seems to be some evidence it also helps to reduce Krausen during fermentation. I added a dosage of two drops per gallon of wort. And keeping the Krausen level down is important because the only outlet I have is through here, and it's really a pretty tiny little hole, which I don't want to get blocked up. So I've removed this little bit of tubing. I just have this here. That's gonna sit pretty high above the wort. 
um, but I will keep an eye on the crowds and just to make sure that this doesn't get blocked. I am doing temperature control this time, so my chest freezer is set to 68 Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius. And I've attached a tube to the top and put that into Starsan and that's going to be my blow off valve. I'm going to leave this to ferment for a couple of days and wait to the fermentation to start to die off before going to the next stage. And that next stage was to wait until fermentation was nearly complete so I could add the dry hops. So I have this hop sleeve and this will allow me to dry hop without bunging up my spigot at the bottom here. And for my hops I'm using more Citra, Azaka and Amarillo. Now the minute I open this lid I am exposing my wort to oxygen but because the fermentation I think is not quite finished I'm hoping that most of the oxygen will get scrubbed by the yeast as it finishes up. Okay, here goes. So I added my hops to my sanitized hop bag, lowered the hoppy bag into my fermenter and screwed the lid back on. Now I'm gonna flush this just with a little bit of CO2 and I'm gonna bump up the temperature just a couple of degrees and uh, let it finish up. A couple of days later, it was time to keg the beer. I pushed star sand water out of a keg using CO2. To transfer between here and the keg, I just have a little piece of silicon tubing, just a quick disconnect on one end, which will go onto the keg. And then on this end here, I'm going to clamp this down onto the spigot at the front and put just maybe two PSI through the top of this thing. And then I'm gonna need this so that the gas that's in the keg can escape into this bucket of star sand. So I hooked everything up, opened the spigot, and applied some pressure. Seeing it bulge when I put the gas in makes me a little bit nervous. So I'm just putting this in in stages and then disconnecting again. Now this hop sleeve is really coming into its own here. It means that nothing's getting blocked because all the hops are still stuck there in that sleeve. And there we have it. A keg full of pressure transferred beer. Only thing left to do now is to taste it. have Norm and Norm's son, Christian. Dad? Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit, you are my dad. <laughs> wow. No, he, he knows that despite having that, that lush head of hair, that yeah. he is my son. I was wondering why you were <laughs> yeah. sticking around for so yeah, long. Yeah. So the cheap fermenter is back, and uh, you tried the, the previous beer. In I the did. Fermenter. We and I, couldn't tell them apart. No, right? there was no difference in the cheap fermenter. By brewing a New England IPA, I want to see did I get any sort of oxygen exposure that has messed up the beer? And the typical way that you would see that is you get a very dark orange color mm -hmm. on the beer in the mm -hmm. pour, and then the taste is very susceptible to oxygen, which is sort of like sort of cardboardy taste. Right. Sawdusty cardboard taste if it's oxidized. Mm -hmm. So that's our job today is to see how this has worked out and is it oxidized? Okay. So if we take a look at the color, first of all, have we got the deep red oxidized color? doesn't appear to be that way for me it um yeah it's it's exactly what you would expect for a new england ipa it's cloudy yeah it is well cloudy amber kind of deep orange yep yeah. nice carbonation too i mean the, the the head on this thing yeah. is really um solid and and sort of creamy looking i'd be thrilled with this if i was served this at a bar looks an inviting bit yeah oh yeah absolutely mm -hmm. yeah i can't place a specific fruit but I almost smell a little, like almost a like a cut plum sort of fruity. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, def definitely fruitiness. Uh, maybe a little tropical fruit as well. Yeah. yeah, let's give it a try. I'm excited. Cheers, boys. Thank you Cheers. for having us in your entirely blue brick guest house. <laughs> entirely blue. <laughs> wow, I really enjoy that. I know that's it's really, really good. good. It's really You've good. hit our genetic palate. <laughs> <laughs> I. Personally, don't get a orange sawdusty cardboardness. <laughs> no. I get a I get a nice hoppy kind it's, of like vaginal kind of like um, yeah. It's got a nice, elegant like I'm very much enjoying it. I haven't found even the aftertaste to feel mm. offensive in any way. Yeah, it's got a great smoothness and taste. I yeah. Think. The ultimate question here is: Do you have enough for us to take some home? Yes, I do. Of course. All right. <laughs> I'm keeping this away from you. <laughs> awesome. That was good. That was really good. Yeah, was and nice. this is really good. This is great. Man, that's good. 